welcome. It's great to be with you here at the entrance to St. Mary's Chalcombe for this service of worship from St. Mary's and St. Stephen's Lansdowne, just slightly further up the hill behind you. My name's Andrew Avrenko, I'm the curate and one of the priests for both churches and for you all. Well, Lent is coming to a close. Easter awaits us with the joy of Jesus' resurrection and the immortality that he shares with us. But today we enter into the darkness, the sadness, the tragedy, as the cheers turn into condemnations. Today is both Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, a day that we hear and reflect upon Jesus' final week of mortality, from his entrance into Jerusalem on a donkey to his exit on the cross. As ever, this is an informal service, but one which should be slightly different. In a moment, we'll hear a passage from Mark's Gospel before reflecting upon it, and then we'll hear from three members of St. Stephen's who will bring us a dramatised version of the uh, Passion reading. But before all that, and before we close then with prayers and blessings, let's spend a moment and in prayer. Humble Lord, while people clamoured for a warrior king, the cult revealed your servanthood as you face the way of tears, the tearing of the temple veil. Take us from the baying mob to the place our faith in you. Jesus Christ, our victim and our saviour. Amen. Well, as I said, the first reading is looking at Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. It's taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, the first 11 verses. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent his disciples, two of them in fact, and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks upon it, and he sat on the donkey. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut out in the fields. Then those who went ahead of those followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, it was already late. He went out to Bethany with the twelve. Well, Jesus has entered into Jerusalem and we've entered into St Mary's. I'm speaking to you from the pulpit in front of one of our stained glass windows that depicts Jesus upon the cross that he walks to this week. In his day, Jesus was what went for a celebrity there was no streaming or social media platforms to get your fix of news or entertainment from. Jesus' fame came about from old school word of mouth. Whether Jesus wanted them to or not, those that saw, heard or were healed by him told their family and friends about it, about him. And whatever their opinion of Jesus was, of what he said, of what he did, of who he was, news spread about him throughout all levels of society, whether religious, 
military or secular. Words got out that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. And most people that were there for the Passover celebrations or not, they wouldn't have known what he looked like, but it wouldn't have taken them long to have figured it out. A man upon a donkey encircled, encircled led and followed by an entourage of people would have drawn their curiosity at the very least, even if they didn't know the prophecies that foretold it. The crowds gathered. Some were desperate to get some of the healing that they had heard about. Some were curious to see this person and would have been annoyed that would have been annoyed that he was there and the crowds he was drawing were disrupting their Passover celebrations. Some were suspicious, fearful, even angry. Here he was, a saviour and a threat. Here he was, a celebrity being welcomed, being celebrated with cheers and with sneers. The image we see when we look at someone is not always the full picture, hardly it is. When we see actors on the red carpet or musicians rocking it out on stage, we can only see what is on the surface. We don't see what's going on in their minds, their hearts and their lives. It was similar for the crowd watching Jesus. The crowd in Jerusalem might have seen a person seemingly at ease with being the centre of attention, but they wouldn't have seen the full picture of the person before them. They wouldn't have seen or known what was on Jesus' mind. He might have been smiling on the outside, but on the inside, he was wrestling with the mission that God had given him. The crowd couldn't see what Jesus could see ahead of him, the cross. And the cross weighed heavily upon him, even before he bore it upon his shoulders. Well, just as the crowd didn't know what was going on inside of Jesus' mind, we often don't know what's going on inside of each other's either. We might be smiling on the outside, but struggling on the inside. We might seem to be confident and capable to many, but secretly are apprehensive, anxious, and doubt our abilities. God knows not only what's going on inside of you, but what is inside of you. He knows and doesn't doubt your abilities. He knows your gifts, your talents, your potential, and has a mission to help you achieve it. For your benefit, for his, for everyone's. Jesus knew what his mission was, and it scared him. He didn't know if he could carry it through, but Jesus knew that God would help him achieve it. The Holy Week that lies ahead of us is a good week to listen to God and find our mission within his. It's a good week to discover what God is calling each one of us to, to be blessed by and to bless through. It's a good week to search for new life, especially amongst the darkness of this world. And whatever you discover, whether it's certain or uncertain, whether it's scary or exciting, whether it weighs heavily upon you or lifts you up, know that like Jesus, you are not alone as you move into the future. Because like Jesus had Simon and Cyrene, you have God to provide the strength you need. Like Jesus, you have people around you. He had the disciples, you have the church, the body of Christ. 
And thanks to Jesus completing his mission, you can have the Holy Spirit with you and within you to guide, comfort and encourage you on your way. Amen. Well, Jesus is in Jerusalem. His final week has begun. And as people gather to celebrate the Passover with a feast, Jesus gathers with his disciples and his followers for his last supper. Lynn, Brian and Margaret from St Stephen's are going to bring us a dramatised reading of the Passion narrative that takes us with Jesus to the cross. When the hour for the Passover meal came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them could be the one who would do this. A dispute also arose amongst them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen! Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when I once hurried, turned your back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, 
this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength in his anguish. He prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Whilst he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him. Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat amongst them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, Whilst he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, You are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, 
you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learnt that he was, under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him, perhaps some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests the leaders and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither was Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified and that their voices prevailed. So Pilate, gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. And he released the man that they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the, from the camp, country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and were wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, 
but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. Soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly, I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this, this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb with no one had ever been laid, where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Behind me is the altar and above the altar at St Mary's is another beautiful stained glass window. This one's showing Jesus praying in the garden of Gethsemane and taking on his cross. Well, with all that we have seen, with all that we have heard, with all that is on our hearts and minds, with all that we carry, 
Let's pray to God, our Creator and our Heavenly Father, who loved the world so much that he gave and sent his only Son to give us life. The response to Lord, hear us, is graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I'm going to step out of the frame and let you focus on the window as we pray. Let us pray. Siren of Cyrene was forced to carry the cross for your son. Give us grace to lift heavy loads from those that we meet, to stand with those condemned to die. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Your son watched the soldiers gamble to share his clothes, transform the hearts of those who make a profit from their victims and those who heart, whose hearts are hardened by their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The thief who was crucified with Jesus was promised a place in your kingdom. Give pardon and hope, healing and peace to all those who look death in the face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. From the cross, Jesus entrusted Mary, his mother, and John, his disciple, to each other's care. Help us also to care for one another and fill our homes with the spirit of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In Mary and John, your son created a new family at the cross. Fill our relationships and those of new families today with mutual care and responsibility. And give us a secure hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The centurion was astonished to see your glory in the crucified Messiah. Open the eyes of those who do not know you, to see in your Son the meaning of life and death. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Joseph of Arimathea came to take your son's body away. Give hope and faith to the dying and the bereaved, and gentleness to those who minister to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Simon and Joseph, Mary and John, became part of your church in Jerusalem. Bring your church today a varied company of people, to walk with Christ into the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Lord of the Church, hear our prayers and make us one in heart and mind to serve you in Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us conclude our time of prayer with the prayer that Jesus himself gave us. Hallowed be your Father, our Father, in heaven. Hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And Father, what we have prayed for, answer. What we should have prayed for, remember. What we regret, forgive. And what we are, bless, for Jesus' sake. Amen. This is quite a heavy week in the church calendar as we absorb and take on Jesus' story. But it's nothing, obviously, compared to the suffering of so many. So as your lives, thoughts and prayers intermingle with what you've heard, what you see and what you do this week, Take good care of yourself as we walk with Christ to his walk, to his joy of resurrection. So let's end with a blessing from God. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you to faith, to him, bring you by faith to his eternal life. And may Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him in the way of his cross. And may the Spirit, who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share in his glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer and Guide, be with you always and evermore. Amen. Goodbye.